Good morning, dear Lucidus Training Day participants. I warmly welcome you in our annual Training Day by Lucidus. This year we are meeting in a new reality. It's happening remotely. And as Friedrich Nietzsche said, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. And with these inspiring words, we would like to start our training day. So to warm you a little bit up and remind the rules which we should follow in these remote sessions, I am saying that please note that your questions can be asked directly only in question and answer session. So to ask a question, please raise a hand. Or you can write your question in the chat box and we will try to answer the questions as soon as possible. So when we have reminded you the rules, we would like to start with the first warm-up polling. So please, can you state the polling? Which time you are attending the training day? First, second, third, or maybe 256? And we, when we have talked main rules and started the poll, I would like to remind you our today's plan. So we will start with Mrs. T.U. Tam at 9.10. At 10.10, 10, we will see the presentation from Nico Group, carried out by Mr. Homer, Mr. Gel Gelhart and Mrs. Karen. At 11.40 will be a small lunch break and at 12.10 there will be a Lucidus case study at Anatomy Mu Museum in Riga. After the case study, there will be a presentation from Nedal Aluminium and after Nedal Aluminium, wrapped up by FLIR systems from Germany. To follow our program, you can see it also in your emails. And now, I think that we can try to connect to our first speaker from Estonia, Mrs. Tiu Tam. She knows more about light than we can imagine. And there are even rumors that Mrs. Tiu Tam knows from, from where the light comes from. So Tiu, Tiu, can, do we have a connection already? Yes, yes I, have I have connection. connection. Good Perfectly. morning. Perfectly. Good morning, Tiu. So are you ready to carry out the presentation? Of course, of course I, am I am always, always ready. ready. Perfect, as, as a pioneer. Okay, okay. So I take it, it, over the yes, screen. Yes, yes, of course you can take okay. over the screen. So good luck to you. Thank you. You can... Yes, you can start. Yes, yes uh, so I start, start immediately. immediately. Hello, I am Diotam from Estonia and I am an electric engineer and dedicated to everything about lighting. The first, I have to apologize my poor English, but I hope uh, you understand my presentation. We need light not only to see. Light is one of the main drivers of a circadian system. It affects uh, to our brain. I try to show here a little bit. I hope you see it. And uh, through brain affects our hormone levels and the sleep-wake cycle. You can see different uh, hormones and where it impact uh, here on this screen. Uh, this is a sign how productive we are and everybody wants to be uh, productive. A little bit. Okay. Uh, there is so many different services in this world. How the light impacts to our health and productivity. Uh, here you can see only one survey from UK. 77% of office workers believe that the lighting in the workplace affects their productivity. 33% say that access to natural light is important. 
and 32% say that they would be happy to work on the artificial light that is designed to aid productivity. Uh, the survey results suggest that whatever lighting's direct biological effects are, humans at least psychologically react to illumination. You may be surprised uh, why I talk today about topics from medicine science, but uh, this is important topic to be healthy and productive. And do you all want to be healthy and productive? I can say that so many customers call me uh, to consult them. Why? If there is all light uh, done like in standard, the workers are tired and not productive, especially in the autumn and winter. Of course, the light is not the only reason, but very important reason. Too few light in the daytime is bad, but too much light in the evening is bad too. Uh, last year, we talked about a correct calculation of maintenance factor. Using correct maintenance factor in the LED lighting calculations, we get too much light always. It means that LED lighting need to dim. Because of health effects of UV illumination or poor spectral light distribution cause uh, worker fatigue, increased headaches, medical stress, this, uh, decrease in sexual function, increase anxiety, symptoms of different diseases increase, circadian rhythm disruption due to wrong timing of light. For example, too much light in the evening or at night makes us awake and it is hard to go, uh, go to sleep. Too few light all day means that melatonin level is very high in your bloodstream and we are tired and do not want to work. In the long period, it means depression, etc. But nobody uh, from us don't want to be in depression. In the world, there are everywhere companies who study office conditions and how these conditions impact to the productivity. Here you can see one of these companies, short report from Germany. Here you can see where it's, it is from. As you can see on this graph, the workers understand that the lighting conditions are the most important. But satisfaction is under 60%. In modern offices, we hear often that there is done everything to the workers. There are plants, fitness possibilities. You can even take your pet with you, etc. But nobody talks about lighting and climate. Harvard Health scientists found that if indoor lighting environment and ventilation are in, in the good condition, the cognitive functions work better. Together, it has positive impact on our sleep and wellness too. Uh, good visual communication and rec recognition of objects require cylindrical illuminance calculations. I don't know how in Latvia and in Lithuania, but unfortunately, Estonian electric engineers do not calculate this in their projects. They concentrate only to the horizontal illuminance on the task area. This is a small problem all time. I can't, can't hide the screen. Uh, sharing. But here you can see if here is uh, all uh, normal illuminance and the light comes here and is uh, uh, 
ahead of our eyes. That's all normal. But if happens that the table is illuminated, normal, but nothing comes uh, to our eyes, then we are not awake. Melatonin is not suppressed. However, if the task here is, uh, uh, it does not matter. Do we use in this room turnable white light to get human centric light or not? We talk so, so much with so many about human centric lighting, about turnable white light at, in offices. But the most important thing is how the light is come to our eyes. Of course, we have to avoid the glare. Cylindrical illuminance, you can see how it calculated, it's here. By standard, the height of horizontal plane shall be above the floor. For seated people, 1.2 meters. For standing people, 1.6 meters. Special attention is given to those spaces where visual recognition and communication has higher importance. In the offices, it has to be at least 150 lux. In the next uh, standard version, we hope it will come out uh, soon in this year. There are, uh, for every task area, uh, different, uh, different, uh, different uh, I, I forgot this. Cylindrical illuminance uh, demands. Uh, now I show one picture. Uh, this picture is from one school first form in Estonia some years ago. Very low ceiling and uh, very strong light from parabolic optic system gave cylindrical illuminance only 27 uh, to 42 lux. Eyes of the children were in pain in the evenings and the municipality gave it to court of justice and won. But this is not uh, uh, only one example. I can uh, give so many different uh, examples where uh, cylindrical illuminance is problem. Uh, here you can see yeah, the spectral sensitivity of uh, the five known human photoreceptors. Thomas Young described in 19th century that in our eyes there are three types of cones. Red, green sen sensitivity and blue sensitivity. Together, RGB. We all know RGB light. And the scientists found later rods. Here you can see here. And in the beginning of this century, intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. This is this graph. These cells contain melanopsin. Melatonin is sleeping hormone. Melanopsin suppresses melatonin. Today we know uh, that if there is big part of light in this area, it means uh, in this area, in this graph, ahead your uh, eyes, it means melatonin suppression. And in the morning and afternoon, this light helps us to be in daytime circadian rhythm. In the evening, we need less blue-green blue part of light to get us ready to go and have good sleep. Of course, if you watch this graph, you can see that melatonin 
uh, starts to grow after uh, six uh, somewhere. But we, we don't be sleepy soon. It takes time, two, three hours uh, to go sleepy. That's normal. Traditional uh, lux meters measure visual stimulus response. Here is a visible light. I forgot to show it. Uh, melanopic lighting is lighting that is turned to both. And here you can see visual. visual. Uh, no, melanopic, it means non-visual stimulus. It is turned to our visual and non-visual responses to light. It means our brain react to the light and wake us or prepare to go to sleep. Oops, sorry. The biological effects of light on humans is possible to measure. Uh, who met me uh, last year in Riga, uh, maybe remember I had this kind of spectrometer. It is from a Sensatec lighting passport. Uh, this is from Gigahertz optic spectrometer, and this is GL optics spectis. All these uh, spectrometers uh, can measure how the light gives to be us awake or prepare to go to sleep. There are different metrics developed separately, uh, but uh, they all work. Equivalent melanopic lux was developed by Well Standard. I think you all know something about the uh, green building standards. They are very different. Uh, uh, Mostly, uh, they are, contain energy saving and environment materials. Well, standard is more than green building standard. It means everything is important. Not only energy saving and environment materials, but human itself too. It means light, food, communication, nations, etc., etc. I suggest uh, to uh, watch a little bit uh, yourself uh, what demands are in well standard. I can say in Estonia still not no one project uh, by well standard. Uh, Lithuania got some years ago two first standard certification by well standard. And uh, in Latvia, I, I don't know correctly, there are one or two projects. In Estonia, nothing. Equivalent melanopic lux is alternate metric weighted to the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells and melanopic stimulus. It takes account IPRGC responds by light spectrum quality and quantity and age of human, but does not take account of rods and cones sensitivity. It is measured, here you can see, on the vertical plane at the eye level of the occupant. The amount of light on the vertical plane depends on the luminar light distribution and reflection from the walls and ceilings. And of course, light from the windows, if you have, have their windows. In the dark room where dark walls, uh, there is nothing to reflect into the eyes and you get worse result. Unfortunately, Estonian architects uh, like uh, uh, dark, even uh, black uh, walls and black uh, ceilings. The another alternate metric system is circadian stimulus. It quantifies effectiveness of light sources for activating the circadian system. 
Circadian stimulus developed by Lighting Research Center in USA. It takes account the response by all types of photoreceptors, rods, cones, and epergetses, but not takes response of age. Circadian stimulus is equivalent to percent melatonin suppression after one hour exposure to the light source. Uh, delivering uh, circadian stimulus than uh, 0.3 or more uh, during the day, especially in the morning and the low uh, circadian stimulus under 0.1 in the evening, we have normal awake sleep cycle and are ready to be productive. Unfortunately, uh, I have met so many customers where I see that circadian stimulus is under 0.1 or under 0.2. It's too few light to our eyes. Same scheme helps to cure different disease patients, even like Alzheimer, cancer, etc. Of course, at night, as they need to sleep in the completely dark room. Uh, results show that sleep is well, sleep efficiency and total sleep time increase. But agitation and depression decrease in this case. Melanopic equivalent daylight illuminance, M80, is only metric what is in the standards. The others, what I talked earlier, they are not in standard. But M80, it helps to understand how much a given spectral distribution of light can effectively take part in melatonin suppression during the day and affect our rhythm of work and rest. This is the first international document that sets out the calculation method of human-centric lighting. A high melanopic equivalent daylight illuminance during the day is usually supportive for alertness. The circadian rhythm and a good night's sleep. Plus, a low melanopic equivalent daylight illuminance in the evening and at night supports quick fall into sleep and have a good sleep. Here is melanopic response. Melanopic response graph is this one. And spectral power distributions for equal melanopic equivalent daylight illuminance 250 lux from different LED sources, what was used in study in Mount Sinai Hospital. This is very interesting uh, study because everybody can uh, measure with traditional lux meter how good light you have. You don't need uh, uh, special spectrometers for this. In the table, we can see the results if you want this use. And this, is, this table is only for LED uh, light sources. And maybe you know sunlight, it was uh, the first uh, full uh, spectral uh, LED light source uh, what was on our market. And uh, this was like sunlight. And that's why they, uh, that's why uh, sunlight uh, is in this table too. And we need to get 250 uh, luxes to be healthy and productive. Maybe you have heard already uh, double, about double dynamic lighting. It is a very new uh, topic. Tridonic 
Fagerhult Igutsini Sumtobel sponsored Aalborg University scientists research is it possible to define dynamic light settings responding to the dynamic of daylight in combination of direct and diffuse lighting. They used uh, turnable white luminaires in the ceiling with microprismatic optic and 3000 Kelvin spotlights in every, on, on the every working place direction from the window. Same like light has uh, changing outside, they changed light inside. 3000 Kelvin spots are like sun in the blue sky. They worked out seven different scenarios for office work. In the first phase, they studied, does it have positive impact to work, but not how? The answer was yes. However, the last phase in this study was only four months long and uh, there was only four participants. The workers described their experiences like uh, they didn't notice the light, but it was comf comforting in the room. It feels like daylight in the room as it was so natural. One person said, in longer time, it is possible that the light will be motivated to do the work. Team analyzed perceived visual comfort between dynamic and static lighting periods within the same season, especially showed study good result in October and November comparing to static lighting. However, the team didn't study the results of melanopic lux, circadian stimulus and melanopic equivalent daylight illuminance, but they made all measurements. And I got this data after question. Shortly, lighting CRI was over 90. Uh, lighting uh, uh, correlated color temperature was in front of eyes between these numbers, how you can see here. It depends on the working table position in the room. And uh, vertical illum illumination ahead of the eyes was very good. And if we compare this data with Octavio's table here, we can compare here. Uh, precisely even here, we can see that this study is very successful and interesting and has good idea how is possible to, to solute circadian effective light. This is not window, this is luminar, like window from Italian company Coilux. Luminar is in the wall. Here you can see this luminar, but this is only mirror. And it gives effect like bigger window. And all, if you watch this picture, we think like DDL, double dynamic lighting. Thank you for listening. I don't know. Uh, do you yes. ask now the questions? No, or the question part I... will be after after all your presentations, so you can okay. start to switch on the second presentation. But uh, I have read that Leonardo da Vinci said that uh, the best day for painting is a gray day when there is not too much light, so it's not over light. Uh -huh. I, I think that you agree <laughs> okay. with this as well. I don't know, I don't paint. <laughs> But still, you, you know more about light than I think everybody in our audience. And breaking news, currently our audience is more than 100 people. So your audience is listening very carefully. Okay. So, and, it's a little uh, bit scary. While, while you prepare, uh, can, can we run the second poll? Is it already running? Yes. So, so technical yes, guys are Yes, it saying? is already running. Okay, perfect. So, are you ready to, to continue? Oh, we see on screens already some, some data. 
Uh -huh. So your presentation is ready? We can continue? Yes, my presentation is ready. Okay, to you. So please continue with the second part. Uh, the next topic is challenges in street lighting. Here I talk about different topics what come up in the different projects. This is not uh, uh, one part. Here is some different parts. Here are standards and EU criteria for road lighting. I do not uh, uh, read them to you, uh, but I want to show on the last one what is here. Uh, this is very good document. Who is interested in, uh, you can find it uh, from internet too. There are both from uh, 2018 year and 2019 year in the Google. Use uh, 2019 uh, version if you want to use it. Uh, the first part of uh, road lighting standard helps to assign to different streets lighting classes depend on traffic. In the standard you can find good tables and calculator needs only to answer uh, these questions to get lighting class. Of course it is possible uh, that you calculate different lighting classes for peak time and for night but usually Estonian customers do not expect so precise calculations as they want to see by their own eyes how much they can dim nights, uh, lights at night. In the last column, here are waiting numbers and after answering, you uh, got these numbers, what you need to divide from six. Of course, a second part of the standard is important as there are the values for lighting classes, but I want to explain the fifth part of the standard. Uh, to decide between different solutions, it is important to watch power density indicator and annual energy consumption indicator because of these numbers show how good solution is and how much the road lighting electricity Will, will be cost. Power density indicator shows how precisely uh, the needed area is illuminated. If you illuminate not needed area too much, the power density indicator is bigger. Annual energy consumption indicator shows how much money the customer expend for energy to light this needed area, only for this needed area. If you light too much not needed area, the customer must pay for lighting energy much more. Here you can see one calculation example for a Dialux Evo. Power density values are almost same but uh, usually the, uh, the difference is very small, but it is. But annual energy consumption indicator is very different. Here you can see. Of course, we can watch power per kilometer to say same in this project, but sometimes we have in the new in the installation uh, situation with different luminars, with different distances between poles. And then uh, our power density value and annual energy consumption indicator is the best solution to find what is the best solution. Unfortunately, most of the customers look only procurement expenses, but correct is to look all expenses. It means procurement plus energy ex expenses in 20 years or 25 years. 
However, we do not know energy price, but we know calculated power density and annual energy consumption indicator. Then we don't need to know uh, electricity uh, price. Lower value of DE and DP means the better energy performance. They depend on many factors, lighting class, road profile arrangement, width of carriageway and sidewalks, type of the light source, quality of optics, etc. Uh, common mistakes uh, to find energy efficient solutions. Efficacy, efficiency versus efficacy in lumen white. Everybody talks about efficiency, but compare efficacy numbers. It is wrong. Lumen per watt is luminous efficacy unit. If we compare two different luminars, it is possible that luminar with less efficacy has better power density and annual energy consumption. Efficiency doesn't matter in this case because uh, efficiency shows how much light go, we got, get out of this luminar, but what the light uh, illuminate, how much needed part or not needed part, it doesn't show. A power density indicator with annual energy consumption indicator helps us to find the best solution for years. It means we need to compare solutions with DE and DP, not efficacy. Uh, calculations with console in one project where the customer asked my expert opinion in Estonia. It was, uh, this project was, uh, was built uh, with European money. And you can see uh, the project, like the electric engineer, calculated it. As uh, the road is six meters width, but luminars are, uh, the post of luminars are four of six meters from this roadway, the electric engineer needed to uh, inclinate the console, 50 degrees. What does it mean? The first, we have light pollution and light trespass. You can see it here. Some of light goes up. We didn't talk, maybe here are some uh, houses. It means light trespass to their windows all, all nights. Uh, maybe here is forest, and there are uh, nightlife, and uh, uh, with daylight life, uh, all uh, flora and fauna, they need to sleep. They don't need this light. Okay, I said that uh, to the project engineer, uh, you can't uh, calculate uh, this way. You ca calculated it wrongly. You have boom, ang boom angle uh, 50 degrees and boom uh, console length uh, 1.5 meters. Uh, you don't get uh, this uh, result afterwards. And uh, the LED lighting need to be uh, parallel to the ground. Electric engineer looked at me and said, no problem, we put uh, the luminars uh, parallel to the uh, ground. Sorry, here are so many mistakes. Okay, uh, in his calculation, we can see here uh, the threshold increment. It is clear, 17, but need to be less than 15. But all these calculations are wrong 
But let's see uh, before the uh, newly calculated uh, slide, I show uh, what is power density indicator. You can see it is uh, quite big and annual energy consumption indicator is really big because uh, so many light goes here, not here. In specification, uh, aha, okay, I show back. Uh, you can see light spot height, seven meters. But in specification was woody pole, nine meters. Seven meters on the ground. It I took from the specification. This picture I took from a Dialux uh, uh, side view. And you can see he calculated seven meter, but the post is itself seven meter. It means this is not, this is wrong high. Okay, let's calculate in this uh, sit, uh, situation. We know this is seven meters. This is 1.5 meter and here is 15 degrees. We need to know this high and we need to know console projection to the ground. If we use a little bit sinus and cosinus, we can get all this data. And after little calculation, we see that high of luminar is instead of seven meter, it is eight meters. And boom length is instead of 1.5 meters, 1.14 meters. It means overhang is different than he calculated. And here you can see uh, this top is electric engineers project. Only uh, increment, threshold increment uh, is not okay. But here is my calculations. If I corrected the data, only what is okay is threshold increment, but all other data are not. Did you understand how our project engineers make all time the mistakes if they use uh, boom inclination? Okay, let's see uh, a power uh, uh, power density power density uh, indicator is in my project even worse because we light only this area what doesn't need light. But uh, annual energy consumption, it's same. This is uh, normal because we use same luminars and uh, distances of the poles are same. I hope uh, these slides put your uh, think about this topic much more if you may have to make calculations about with uh, angled uh, booms. Let's talk about light color. 3000 Kelvin or 4000 Kelvin. Maybe 2000 Kelvin, 700 Kelvin or even less. Some people do not use curtains on their windows. Wrong luminar or wrong position of luminar cause light pollution. In 2016, American Medical Association suggested to use in these areas where the people live warmer light sources due to less clear melatonin suppression and circadian disruption. Some years disputed about this because producers like to show very good efficacy uh, to their luminars and 
Cool the light color gives mostly this possibility. But who is more important, residents or producer? Producer or we? Us. Today we can't find, well, today we can find many examples where the street lighting is not only 207, well, 2700 Kelvin or less, but even turnable white to use in different time, different light color. Uh, on these graphs is melanopic uh, curve. You can, can see it here and here. Uh, and you can understand why in sodium lamps uh, solutions time, we didn't meet so many problems with circadian disruption than with LED lighting. It means we have to correct, uh, very correctly uh, make our projects. Some pictures about light trespass in Tallinn. This picture is uh, taken from apartment inside of import, uh, uh, one apartment. Here are uh, luminaires two meters from window and never gives uh, to have possibility to the dark room at night. Here you can understand yourself too. Two pictures from uh, two small towns in Estonia. These are, these are from traffic cameras uh, pictures and you can see these people who live here or here or here or here, they have all time lighting trespass in their windows. Pedestrian crossing is conflict area in the standard. But with these pictures, I want to show that it is not so simple to calculate only conflict area. In certain conditions, it is easy not to see the pedestrian. It depends on climate conditions, what color closes the pedestrian wear. Does it have uh, some reflective sign? Is there other cars driving towards you and how their headlights work? Are these normally regulated, etc., etc.? Let's see one video, uh, what I made three years ago. I, was, I put my husband uh, to uh, walk on different uh, pedestrian crossings. Here you can see uh, there is a crossing. Uh, there are luminaires for uh, crossing. Okay, uh, I, I hope that uh, it put you a little bit to think about uh, crossings uh, lighting. To get positive contrast, ah, Estonian, uh, we have in Estonia a special uh, 
standard, what we took away from Germans, and how to calculate uh, luminars for pedestrian crossings. To get positive contrast on the pedestrian crossings, it is important that there is light before pedestrian. Here you can see. Uh, towards uh, to that driver. Only then can driver always notice someone on the crossing. Part of drivers are old, sick, or just inattentive. Good location, location for luminar post is like here on Licht uh, pages. Uh, you can see approximately half to one post high before crossing. Then the pedestrian is visible to the driver. Yes, you can say that in my video, the crossing luminars were directly near the crossing. And you saw how good or bad the driver might see the pedestrian. Videos are done without driving. Cars drive quickly and conditions are different, may say even worse. About luminars for crossing, we know that road administration wants to use same post for other info too, like traffic signs and lights, and almost never let to put the post so far from crossing. That's why we calculate crossing light separately. In our standard, it is important that average vertical illuminance in the center uh, uh, line is minimum 30 lux in, on the one meter high. One meter on sidewalk, here you can see it is part of the crossing because a driver need to know uh, is there anybody waiting to go over the road or not? At night, we need less light on the roads. There are different possibilities to control night lights. Teachers ask me how to know what lighting glass to use at night. If municipality does not know, samely, we don't know. I didn't notice uh, that in Estonia anybody makes calculations for nighttime with different lighting class. However, uh, this possibility is in the standard. Usually customer decides yourself how few light to give at night. If the customer can change yourself light level, then usually they decide this by their own eyes. What is the best solution? And trust them, of course. If they order luminars with astrodim or dynadimmer, then they must know how much they want to dim at night. Don't forget that in our climate, the LED lighting behavior a little bit differently compared to calculations. There is much colder in our climate, not plus 25 degrees, even in the summer. But we need to do what we need to do. We need to ask right questions. The first question, do we need lighting control? Where is the limit of power or luminous flux not to dim lights? Is it 25 watts, 31 watts? As LED lighting all time goes better and better, it means uh, maybe the limit is 25 watts. We don't know today. The second question, how competent is customer to use different lighting control systems? Maybe there is enough to use only like do not dimmer. It is like astrodim, chronotic, etc. 
For more complicated systems, is no easy solution. Use D4i luminars with ready to saga nodes. This is a solution that can build separately in different times. If the customer has no money for all or do not know what he wants. In this luminars is ready Dali, uh, Dali net here in the luminar itself. And you can add sensor or a wireless control node, whatever when. I ask from Estonian outdoor lighting uh, control guys, what does it mean in money? And they answered uh, that one wireless saga node is cheaper than say and they like to use it. If I asked same question from producers, the answer, the answer was, it depends on, but mostly the final price of Luminar itself may be a little bit more expensive, but not always. Saga and the D4E I uh, certification gives confidence for interoperability. You can use dif uh, different nodes or different producers. I, as my time is uh, uh, soon uh, finished, well, ending, uh, I do not uh, read these arguments, but I show a small uh, saga video, what is done three years ago. I took over the, oh, sorry, it, it stopped. Here you saw a small presentation. Oops. Thank you for listening. Now we have five minutes to answer. Yes, we, we have now questions. a small, small time for, for questions. So uh, can you please stop? Okay, thank you. So as I saw from the presentation, so the devil really hides in details. You can make a small mistake in calculations and the results will be really poor. Yes, that's true. So now it, it's really important thing for, for all the designers or planners. But now we can go to questions part. I see that for the, from the polls, uh, there are some attendees, uh, I would say six of them, who believe that uh, 
HIHL, or Human Centric Light, really stands for Batman. So we, we are happy that someone believes in real Batman. But now, do, uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, about uh, human centric lighting, I can say we have in Estonia so many uh, projects already and yes. uh, uh, buildings were ah, done human centric lighting. But okay. uh, what I wanted to say, it doesn't matter. Do you have human centric lighting? It's very important how much is light coming here. Is it correct light? You can put, yes, is this correct light? Yes. What uh, this is what I wanted to say with my first uh, lecture. Okay, th this is one of the most important things to have the correct yes. light, not only centered yes. on on somewhere. That that's correct. I think so uh, most of you have in your company uh, lux meters. Let let's try how much yes. light is here. Put the lux the meter. Uh, no, no, not here, but yes. but this kind. Yeah. How much lux is you get? And okay. watch into Octavio stable. Yes, and also and the correct spectrums because the, there is a visible spectrum. You don't need spec a spectrometer if you have a LED lighting. Oh, of course. Uh, of you course. can see. This is okay. amazing. How few. Uh, there is a question, and the question is uh, just a sec, I will read it out. Uh, the question about Jaga. How to choose between uh, Nema or Jaga? Uh, do you have some information about that? What are the differences between Nema and Jaga? Uh, I, I don't know everything uh, because I never used uh, Nema. But uh, uh, in Nema, there was uh, uh, it Nema socket uh, need uh, uh, added uh, power supply. But uh, there are new uh, saga book uh, what makes Nema socket uh, usable uh, too now. I, I can't answer to this question. You need uh, to write in saga book. You, you find all data uh, sagastandard.org. But the, the, the best uh, advantage of Jaga is using low voltages. Not, not having uh, the in Saga, they, uh, uh, no, uh, not only uh, that uh, low voltage is, uh, if you have D4I uh, uh, driver in the luminar, and the luminar, all the uh, Dalinet is done, and you have Saga uh, connection done in this luminar, uh, what is uh, the best uh, side is if I today don't have uh, money to have uh, lighting for lighting control, then I uh, put only luminars there. And if, if I have uh, tomorrow the money for lighting then control, th there is to space make for improvements to, to get your yes. luminars more efe efficient. That's yes. very nice. And you can. Uh, uh, Whatever time you can add uh, these uh, saga nodes or sensors to this luminar without open the luminar. But there is one more question from the audience, and this is about uh, illumination in parks or squares, because we were talking about streets. There is a street light level. Mm -hmm. But what about parks and what, what to do there? What are your recommendations? Do we use the same color temperature or, or dimming levels or light classes? Can, can you explain about that uh, as well? We have not light classes for scra squares and uh, for box. We even do not have for box uh, standards. Okay. It depends on what we want to do there. This is not an uh, easy question. It, uh, it needs a um, lection. <laughs> Okay, but th there are no regulations on that? It, it really depends that, that on... There is no regulations, but okay. uh, we need uh, dark skies, dark uh, uh, parks at night. It means we need to illuminate only uh, at night, only these um, roads where we walk to be... Okay. Uh, it, it means we don't want to... Robert or beat it. 
I, I hope, I hope uh, that you understood me. My English is poor, as I said. No, no, it, it's fine. We we really <laughs> understand your your I idea. I don't find uh, I don't find the uh, right words uh, so quickly. <laughs> okay, okay. So thank you for for this information. Uh, so there is one more question I see. Uh, so the light est uh, aesthetic side more important than the light side in town squares. Uh, so that that uh, we more look on on how luminaires look, not so much in illumination part. What do you think about this question? I, is it uh, reasonable to do is that? It's a two-sided question because uh, the the mo most important it is that uh, we are, uh, can safely uh, move on these uh, roads or parks. Uh, in the other side, if this is uh, uh, square, it is um, public square. Of course, we want that it looks uh, very nice too. And this is possible to find this kind of solution that uh, uh, this is safe place and looks nice. Okay, thank you this very much possible. For, for your for your answers. Thank you for your presentations to you. And as the time has come, we now have a small technical break. All the other questions we will answer in emails and send to you the answers or we will try to answer in chat. But now a small technical break and we will meet in few minutes for the next presentation from Nico Group.